Hi, this is Andy Darnley with Nationwide Lifts, and uh, in this video, I'm going to help you prepare for a Lula elevator. So, uh, if you're a general contractor or an architect uh, trying to plan on how you're going to add a, uh, a Lula elevator to a, a school or a church or an office building, uh, there's a lot of questions that come up, and I'll try to hit a, a, a lot of those questions in this video. And then, of course, uh, you know how to reach us if, uh, if, if you have any additional questions. So we'll head out to a job site, and I'll show you an install, a fully installed uh, Lula elevator and try to uh, uh, prepare you with a lot of the information you'll need to know. All right, so we're on the site of a fully installed and operational Lula elevator. I know we're talking about site preparation, but uh, this is just as good a site as any to talk about it. Uh, the doors, you can see the way that the, the, the landing doors are, uh, are, are mounted. When you're pre uh, preparing for the site prep though, we prefer to leave the entire uh, landing open. So the only thing that you would have on the landing would be the lintel going across the top and make sure that at the floor level that there's good blocking. The yeah. doors mount below the, uh, the landing, lagging into the, uh, just below the sill. And then there's brackets that mount above the, the, the uh, essentially the header. And so that's really where you need to make sure that you have good blocking above and below. And then even though there's, there is uh, dimensional drawings uh, that show the the rough opening and the and the finished opening and all, it's it's nearly impossible to get it right. So so what we suggest is don't try to sheetrock up to a uh, to a finished opening until these doors are installed. So let us so leave it completely open. Let us install the doors. Make sure that they line up properly with the car, and then come in afterwards and sheetrock up to the doors. All right. So then taking a look further into the pit. Uh, we have a 14 inch uh, depression here in the pit. Uh, you talk with your architect or engineer as far as how thick the, the concrete floor needs to be. All of the weight, or the majority of the weight uh, for most, uh, most of the uh, instances is going to be right here on what we call the, 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 the pit plate. So that plate is where the uh, uh, the rails are resting as well as the hydraulic piston. So the majority of the weight is all in that one position there. Now, if the car were to come down and come onto the buffers, then some weight would be transferred to this location. But under normal circumstances, it's all on that pit plate. This here is just temporary here for my safety. This we call this a pit prop. Just allows us to work within the, uh, uh, the pit uh, uh, safely. Now, for blocking in the walls, the, the, your drawings will show that uh, we need blocking in the walls for the, uh, the rail brackets. So here's, here's uh, one rail bracket, another, approximately every five to six feet all the way up, you'll see the rail brackets holding our, our, our guide rail in place. And then you're going to see legs on each side of the uh, of the T rail. This is where we need to have the blocking. And rather than try to get the elevation exact, what we recommend is doing vertical blocking the entire way up. That way we can put the, the plates at, at whatever elevation makes the most sense and we're still going to get some, uh, some good uh, wood to, to lag into. LDLs are great as far as using for the blocking or you could also use say two by 12s on the flat and then, and then double thick. So it's important to have blocking all the way up here and then all the way up here. Uh, the, the drawings may show blocking in the middle, but th that's essentially uh, not, not commonly used, not essential because all of the, the pull force is right here. That's more just a, um, a additional of lagging there. But so, so as long as you get the blocking on each side, that's, that's what's really important. Uh, let's see, the next thing you need to know is the, the light and the GFI. Uh, you need to have a GFI and a light within uh, every uh, within every pit. The light typically is, is over here on the rail side. It can be placed just about anywhere, but typically if you were to have the door here, rail here, typically this is a good place for your light. Uh, if there was a door on the other landing, then that's that's uh, where you might uh, have to work with us to find the right location for for the light so that uh, uh, it, it's in a it's in a clear location. One other thing you should take into consideration with the pit is you may need to have a sump pump. 
Now that is going to be up to uh, local building uh, uh, code, depending on the situation of the building. Uh, it also may depend on if you have sprinklers in the building. So if there's sprinklers in the building, you very likely are going to have to have a sump pump. What we recommend to a lot of people is when you're pouring the pit, put, put the, uh, the hole in there for the sump pump. Uh, if you don't need it, it can always be covered up. Um, uh, but if you do need it, you're not uh, digging things up. Uh, and of course, it's a, a lot better if you just find out uh, right up front from the building department if you're going to need it or not. Yeah. But uh, uh, that's about everything you need to know about the pit. Uh, once the, the doors are installed and you do sheetrock up to them on the outside, just be aware that you will also be coming in on the inside and sheetrocking up to them on the inside because the entire hoistway has to be fire rated. Uh, so, uh, so there will be some, some additional sheetrock rock work that, that is needed uh, uh, after the, uh, the elevator is installed. All right, a very important part of your site preparation for your roped hydraulic lula is the equipment room, the machine room. So uh, a couple important things, the door must be fire rated, the door must be self-closing and self-locking. So you need to have a, uh, a door closer on it or spring hinges. So this one has a, a door closer on it. And then it must be self-locking where you cannot unlock it. So it, it, it must be in, in such a way that you, you absolutely need a key at all times and nobody can, can change it and, uh, and unlock it. So those are two very important things and of course uh, must be fire rated. So then coming inside the machine room, you would have your elevator main power disconnect uh, that, and then you would also have your elevator lighting disconnect. Both of these disconnects must be fused and then you can refer to your drawings as far as what the size of that must be. Uh, another thing is you must have an auxiliary contact in the main disconnect. That auxiliary contact is used to enable or disable the battery lowering. The, this hydraulic lula has the ability to uh, lower the elevator and let you out uh, if you were to lose main power. So that can be done in one of two ways. You would either have a, a third fuse in here that's used for our lowering. So uh, let's say if you only had a single phase, you could uh, make it a three phase with a third fuse and, and we would use that. But if you have three phase power, which is very common for, for the Lula, you would have to have an auxiliary uh, contact in here. Let me actually open this up and show you what that looks like. In this case, so this is a three phase, uh, uh, this is a three phase power. So you have those three fuses and then right here is your auxiliary contact. That's usually with, with any of these, these uh, uh, disconnects, you can purchase this separately. And, uh, and then we're using that for our, our battery lowering, okay? And, and it's also very important that these disconnects must be fused. If that's part of code, it must be fused, okay? The lighting does not need any auxiliary contact and typically a general duty uh, will, will, uh, will suffice, but that also must be fused, okay? Uh, also what must be uh, provided in here is a GFI outlet and and a, a light switch. So you need to have a GFI, you need to have the light, and then the light must be protected. So you can't have exposed uh, fluorescence, you can't have exposed bulbs, they must, it must be protected. In many cases, uh, we want to see a cage over that, that light, so very important. The entire machine room must be fireproofed, must be sheetrock, must be fireproofed. There cannot be anything that's not related to the elevator in here. So you can't have HVAC lines running through here, water lines running through there. Anything in this machine room has to be related to the elevator. Uh, fire extinguisher, you need to have a, uh, an up-to-date fire extinguisher in the machine room. And, uh, uh, and then here's our controller. The size of the machine room, it, 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 there's not really anything that's, that specifies what size you need as long as you have your clearances. We must have three feet of, of clearance in front of our disconnects, and we must have three feet of clearance in front of our controller. If this were a, a higher voltage controller, we might need four feet in, the, in, front, of, in, in front of that. But in the case of Lula's, uh, as long as you have a three foot of clearance in front of it, you're, you're fine. So depending on how you want to lay out the, the, the control room with your, with your disconnects and with your controller, uh, you just have to plan for that space in front of it. The drawings will show you the size of the controller and the, the pump unit so that you can you can plan for the space in front of it. All right. Now, so this is this part right here is the controller, the upper panel. This has all of the electronics within it. 
and uh, and then the part down here is your your tank and pump unit. So inside here is where, is where all, all the hydraulic fluid is stored. The the pump and the valve is, is all in here, and then. And then what we would essentially have to do is run hydraulic pipe from this tank uh, through the wall and into the hoistway. If there's a remote hoistway, something that's not sharing an adjacent wall, we have to do a little bit of planning ahead to, to make sure that we will be able to route to that, uh, that hydraulic piping through. Uh, also, we need to run uh, wire cable through there for, uh, for all the controls. So all the wire coming out of the controller is going through this conduit and then through the wall and into the hoistway. So again, if the, the hoistway was remote, we would have to plan for uh, a way to get all of that cable through. All right, something else that needs to be taken into consideration when you are planning a Lula installation is the fire service. Now, just like any other commercial elevator, a Lula elevator does typically require a fire service, which basically means if a smoke alarm uh, or a heat detector or sprinklers go off, uh, you want this elevator to react in a certain way. For instance, if, if there was smoke on this landing, the, uh, um, there, there's a smoke detector above the landing here, which would send a signal back to the controller. And if the cab were here, it would send the cab to an alternate landing, uh, open up the door and then disable the elevator. If somebody were inside the elevator coming here, it would not allow that. It would basically redirect the elevator down to that uh, to the alternate landing, let the people out, and then shut down the elevator. So, uh, and there's obviously other scenarios too that uh, uh, that the fire service has to take into account. But the important thing for site preparation is every landing must have a smoke detector above the where where the uh, the entrance of the elevator is. Also, every uh, uh, the machine room must have a, uh, a smoke detector and the hoistway at the top of the, the hoistway must have a smoke detector. And then the signals for those smoke detectors must make their way back to the machine room so that the controller uh, can have access to that information and know what to do. Now, if there's sprinklers involved, that can get a, a little bit more complicated if there's, there's sprinklers in the hoistway or in the machine room because you have a high voltage going on inside the, uh, the machine room and, and as well you have electricity inside the hoistway. So uh, if there is a sprinkler inside either one of those things, you have to have a heat detector next to that sprinkler. I believe it's within 18 inches, 12 to 18 inches. You have to have a heat detector there with that information feeding back to the, uh, uh, to, to the controller. And then if, if, you, if you are talking about having a sprinkler inside the machine room, you also must have what they call a shunt trip breaker, which essentially, if the heat detector goes off in that machine room, meaning that the, 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 the sprinkler is about to go off, it will shut down all the power to that uh, machine room. So, uh, so picture uh, there's a fire inside the machine room, the heat detector goes off before that sprinkler goes off, it sends a signal to the main breaker and kills all power to, to that machine room so that nobody uh, is, is hurt from, from the, uh, the high voltage in that room. So keep that in mind. There's definitely things to take into consideration with, with smoke detectors, heat detectors, sprinklers, and so on. Make sure you speak with your, uh, uh, with your ele elevator representative about that. All right, so we're talking more about the site prep. We're actually inside a finished hoistway. I want to show you uh, how this should, should look in the end. So for starters, we have it all sheetrocked up to the door. This was the sheetrock was put in after the door was installed, so you can see that we were able to come right up to the edge. Uh, fire caulk around any holes that were in the uh, uh, that were in the sheetrock, uh, but it's very important that this is done after the fact, after the doors are placed and adjusted, so that uh, there's no more adjusting afterwards. Now, uh, something else to consider: I mentioned that the uh, the doors attach at the top and at the bottom, so you can see this bracket right here. And, and a bracket way over here, these are lagged into the lintel at this point. So you want to make sure that you have good blocking above there. All right. Um, I'll show you the blocking down or where they attach below here in a second. But while we're at this position, I can also show you the smoke detector at the top of the hoistway. So uh, you want to make sure that you have a, a smoke detector at the top. And if we did have a, a sprinkler in here, you would also have to have a heat detector. And then again, you can see the, that uh, th these brackets are attaching all the way up and down the hoistway, uh, about every five or six feet and, and lagging into there. So you need to make sure you have good blocking there. Now we're going to go down a little bit. 
So here's a sill of the door. This is a, also another misconception. A lot of people think that the, the, the door is actually on the landing. In fact, these, these two-speed doors are hanging within the hoistway. You can see the hoistway wall is back here. These doors are hung inside the hoistway so that they can pocket inside. But they're not actually pocketing into the wall. They're, they're pocketing within the, uh, the hoistway itself. All right, and then uh, you can't really see here, but, but just below this point is where this is attached. This is lagged into the, uh, uh, just below the, the landing sill. So you want to make sure that you have good wood or concrete right below the landing so we have plenty of, a, of a, a good space to either lag or anchor into. All right, I hope this video helped you understand a little bit more how to prep for our uh, roped hydraulic lula. If you have any further questions, you can uh, always reach out to one of your uh, sales representatives or, or uh, call us at 888-323-8755. Thank you.